We're now going to solve logarithmic equations. And there's two types of logarithmic equations that we're going to deal with. We're going to deal with when we have two logs and only two logs. And then we're going to deal with when we have a log and a number. And so these are the two cases, case one, case two. And the basic idea of the two logs is we set them equal to each other and then use the property, and this is related to our exponential property, log a of m equals log a of n. So if this is true, then in order, since the log base a's match, in order for these sides to be the same, m has to equal n. And then we can solve m equals n and get our answers. For our log and a number problems, we set the log equal to the number, and then we convert to an exponential, and then solve it from there. And so these are the properties that we're going to use, and this may involve the change of base formula to be able to solve this, and I'll give an example of that in just a minute. So let's suppose we have the following. So suppose we have 2 log base 3 of x equals log base 3 of 25. Well, we don't have the logarithms equal to each other because we have this 2 in the way. So the first thing we have to do is move the 2 up to the power so that we get log base 3 of x squared equals log base 3 of 25. Now, since the log base 3's match, and that's all I have on each side is the log base 3's plus what they're the logs of, we can get rid of the logs because we know what's inside has to be equal. So x squared has to equal 25. We then go back to chapter 7 and take the square root of both sides with our plus or minus, which gives x equals plus or minus 5. So x equals 5 or x equals minus 5. And if we stop here, we're going to be penalized. We haven't done enough because we have to check our answers. Remember that we can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So when I plug negative 5 in, that's a negative number and he gets ruled out. My only answer then is x equals 5. And we're done. But make sure you check and go back to the originals and see if they work in the original as it's written. Because so, the square can't apply to the x because it's not originally applying to the x. As a second example, suppose we have log base 2 of x minus 2 plus log base 2 of x equals 3. So here we have two logs and a number that's not a logarithm. Well, the easiest thing to do here is to combine our logarithms to get a single logarithm. So we get x minus 2 times x, because we're adding here, so we multiply here. And that's going to equal 3. We now are going to convert this to an exponential. So we're going to grab our base, 2, raise it to the power, and set that equal to the number. And I'm going to distribute to get x squared minus 2x. 2 cubed is 8, and x squared minus 2x. This is a quadratic, so we're going to set it equal to 0. And we recognize that this one factors has x minus 4 and x plus 2. So x equals 4 and x equals minus 2. But wait, we need to go back and check our original logarithms. Will this actually work? So we take our minus 2 and we plug it in. We get minus 2, minus 2. And it breaks on the very first one. It also happens to break on the second one. But if it breaks either of them, we roll it out. And the x minus 2 goes away. Now be careful. It can possibly be negative. If these are both sufficiently positive, big enough x plus 5's, and it's with x plus 3, then a negative 2 would work. So don't just rule it out because it's negative. Make sure you plug it in and make sure it's negative when you apply the logarithm. The 4, other, on the other hand, does in fact work, and so our answer is x equals 4. And again, by converting it to an exponential, we've solved the problem.